Hey everyone, so I have an energy update for you guys. I also posted a video yesterday and I posted a couple videos the day before too, so check those out. There was a warning for a few people that someone might try to use the ki your kids against you. For those that have kids, some someone might try to use them against you on Halloween. They might try to exploit the, the children to get back at you basically. Um, so, you know, protect yourself, be logical. Check that video out if that's for you. But um, for this energy group, the current energy, I'm, what I'm what I'm picking up, what I'm feeling right now, is that someone's mad at you for their own behavior, their own failure to act. Someone's base, it's like they're, it's like they were in pain for a long time, and now that pain has turned to anger, and they're in eight of swords energy, and they don't even realize that they're doing it to themselves. It's such a strange energy that I'm feeling here. It's like. They're mad at you for not chasing them, even though they're probably the one that left. I feel like for this particular energy group, I feel like either they're the one that left or they pushed you to the point where you had no choice but to back away. But regardless, I feel like the ball is still in their court. Like this isn't this isn't a situation where you hurt them and you left. This is a situation where they either really betrayed you and you walked away or they betrayed you or they did something to hurt you and they left or they ghosted you. So, you know, that being said, the ball is in their court. This this person needs to, to make up for what they've done. And I really feel like this person is just... I feel like this really applies to my Taurus energy group too. You don't necessarily have to be a Taurus to, to resonate with this, but I, I do feel that that energy that I typically get in my Taurus videos is coming through here. So, um, you know, but it could be any zodiac sign. But but yeah, what I'm feeling is I'm just feeling anger from this person. It's almost like they're mad at themselves and they're projecting that anger onto you. It's like they really thought you would chase them. They thought that they'd be able to do whatever they wanted and you know, you would always come back. And now this person's having sleepless nights. I feel like this person's having a lot of anxiety about you. Like, I feel like for some, this person might be going through some kind of psychic awakening and they almost feel like you need to lead them through it. Um, which makes sense, but it's like they're not really doing anything. They're not reaching out. So it might be like, you know, maybe someone's... I just feel like this person has a lot of things that they want to talk to you about. Like, maybe you told this person about twin flames or soulmates or different realms or, you know, energy work, psychic work, witchcraft, whatever it might be. You know, it could be in multiple things. And this person's um, researching these things now. This, this person's researching twin flames. You know, they're looking into, and they're probably getting readings on you, too. They're, they're, some of them might be, um, you know, practicing and opening their mind to things that they just weren't open to before. And it's it's almost like they feel like abandoned by you. They feel like you know you're you're supposed to you're the one that taught them about this. So you're the one that's supposed to be leading them through this. You're the one that's supposed to. It, it's like I just hear that they want to talk to you about something. Like they want to, they have questions about things that you told them before. Like let's say that you told them about twin flames before, or soulmates or whatever it might be, and they were like only partially open. Well now their mind is really open. So they they have all these questions. Like they want to understand how it all works. They want to. They want to like ask you like, are we twin flames? Are we soulmates? Like, how does it all work? Like, they just they have so many questions. There's so much going on in their mind. Is what I'm getting. I'm gonna pull cards too. I primarily channel, so this isn't just me babbling. I mean, I'm channeling when I talk. Um, but yeah, they just have so many questions. I'm getting like eight of swords, nine of swords energy. Just sleepless nights, insomnia, stress, busy busy schedules, a lot on their plate right now. Um, just really in their head, really going back and forth, really fighting themselves. And I just get like almost like a sense of entitlement where they feel like, well, you taught them these things. You're the one that changed them. You're the one that opened their mind. You're the one that made them more empathic, more gentle. You're the one that, that shifted the energy. You're the one that brought about these amazing changes in their life, you know, um, for some, it's like you push them to make changes, whether you did it, you know, on a soul level or you actually consciously, physically did it. Some of you actually push them to, you know, to get that new job, to leave that toxic situation, to stand up to that toxic parent, you know, whatever it might be. And it, it's almost like now they feel this kind of entitlement where they're like, well, you, you taught them these things. Um, 
but now it's like they don't they don't have you to talk to they don't it's like they have all these questions and they just they feel like you abandoned them and it's it's so strange because they're the one that abandoned you so it really is I'm going to pull cards but it's re, it's just a really strange energy it's like they're in 8 of swords energy and 9 of swords energy so deep right now that they're not even like recognizing their role in this like they could literally message you right now like they could they could call you right now and be like hey what is a twin flame or hey like you know do i have a chance with you or hey like you know that the thing you taught me about like you know remember what you said before can you can we talk about that again like can you explain that to me like they're they're doing this to themselves and that's what they don't understand all they would have to do is pick up the phone and call you and you would tell them about whatever they want to know about. You know what I mean? It's like the door is wide open, but they're they're keeping themselves from this. They're keeping themselves from this blessing by, you know, it, it's just, it's so strange. It's like they just, they have this anger towards you. It's almost like, well, I want to pull some cards too and see what the cards have to say, but... It's almost like they had a lot of guilt and pain and anger towards themselves regarding this. Like, maybe they really betrayed you. Like, maybe they cheated on you. Maybe they, um, some, some of them could have messed around with, like, a friend of yours. Some of them might have, um, you know, gotten scared and ghosted you just when you, when, you know, when you didn't expect it. You know, it could be a number of things. But I'm almost getting that like this person felt like pain and regret and guilt for a long time. And they still feel that. But it's almost like that pain is kind of turning into anger now. Where it's like they feel like they don't have space in their life for the pain. Maybe they're like a little bit busier than they were before. So they feel like they can't. Like they, they can't afford to slow down and feel that pain. You know, maybe they went through a phase where it's like they really didn't have a lot going on. So they were able to feel that pain. They were able to hold space for that pain. But it's like maybe now they're really busy or they just have a lot going on in their life. Um, so a lot of that pain is turning into anger. And it's almost like they were angry at themselves for a long time and they were beating themselves up. And now it's almost like it was just, it, it's like they reached a breaking point. And they were meant to, to you know, transmute that energy and, and use that energy. It's like their spirit guides were pushing them to reach out to you. You know, you probably also have, you know, they probably also have psychics that are pushing them to reach out to you and they're still just being stubborn. You know, they were meant to take that energy, that energy, you know, what is that quote? Um, what, what is that quote? Uh, Destruction is a form of creation. I think that's from Donnie Darko. <laughs> But maybe it's somewhere, somewhere else. I don't know. But anyway, it, it's it's like, yeah, destruction is a form of creation. Like that, you know, that energy was chaotic, but it was meant to, to light a fire under their ass and get them to change their life and reach out to you. And it's like they did change their life. They did make all these changes behind the scenes. But the one thing they didn't do is reach out to you, you know. Or maybe maybe you guys are in contact. And then there's different stories here. For some, you guys are together in contact, but they're still being distant. For others, they just didn't reach out to you. You know, there's a, there's a couple different variations of this. There's, you know, everyone's in different phases of this this storyline, you know. Um, but it's like, yeah, they were meant to take that energy and use it wisely. And they, it's like, yeah, they did. They changed their life with that energy. But then they were also meant, you know, they were being pushed to reach out to you. They are being pushed by psychics. They are being pushed by... Their spirit guides, they were having dreams about reaching out to you. It's like your higher self was over there probably pushing them to reach to reach out to you. You know, it's like they had all this, they had all the energy for it. And it's like they just couldn't get past their fear. They haven't been able to get past their, their fear. And it made them so angry at themselves that they were not able to get past that fear. Um... And I feel like some of them started feeling like cowards, you know, some of them just really started like looking in the mirror and seeing themselves in a certain light, like being like, damn, like I'm a coward for not being able to reach out to the person I supposedly love. I'm a coward for not being able to take this next step. And I think it was too painful. It was too stressful. It's almost like, it's almost like they saw themselves as a coward for their behavior, but instead of taking accountability for their behavior... And, you know, making a, a brave, bold move towards you, they, instead of doing that, they just became angry at you and basically blamed you. They're like, 
how dare he or how dare she make me feel like a coward? Like, I shouldn't feel like that. Like, it's like they just have like this anger and it's just so strange because it's like their own behavior, but they're blaming you for it. I guess, I don't know. I don't know. There's just like some kind of shifts that happened where it just feels like recent, like the past like couple of weeks or so, it feels like they started blaming you. Like they were in a lot of pain and now they're like, now they've, they're turning that pain. Like they're still in pain. Don't get me wrong, but it's almost like they're angry now too. Like they're like, they're blaming you for things They're Um, and I'm going to pull cards in just a second here. Maybe they just like hated seeing themselves that way. They hated seeing themselves in that light. They hated feeling, they hated the guilt. They hated the regret. They hated feeling bad about themselves. They hated feeling like a coward. So instead of, you know, doing the shadow work, instead of, you know, facing it and, and working through it, they just decided to blame you for it. You know, like I'm not a coward. It's just, you know, it's their fault. They should have reached out to me first. It's like, well, why would this, if you mess things up, why would your person reach out to you first? Like if you abandon them or you betrayed them, why would they, why would the ball be in their court? And that's the thing that this person doesn't understand. Like, why would the ball be in their, in the other person's court? Like if you leave someone, if you betray someone and you break up with them and you break their heart and you walk away, the ball is in your court to fix that. The other person, if someone leaves you, you should not have to chase the person that left you. And that's the weird thing is like this person left you and broke your heart and they expect you, you know, they, ex they expect you to chase them and it should be the other way around. It really should. It's like if they broke your heart and left you, they need to be the one to fix things. You know, the person that did the heartbreaking needs to be the one that fixes it. The ball is in that person's court, you know, and they're trying to pretend like the ball is in your court. Like, oh, like, you know, he or she didn't reach out. They must not care. Um, they didn't chase me. Like, this is their fault. It's like, no, like, this person could love the shit out of you, but they, they know what they deserve and they know it, it's like they're kind of sitting back to see what you do because they know that if you love them, you're going to push past the fear and you're going to, you know, you're, you're going to make a move towards them. But, but yeah, it's like this, this, this person and these people are just really stuck. I mean, it's a group of people. They're just really stuck in their head right now. Let's see what the cards have to say. And this might end up being a two-part video because sometimes my stupid camera likes to cut the videos out. So I'm sorry if it abruptly cuts out. Please just, if that does happen, please um, check back on my channel for part two. Okay, wow, we have Queen and King of Pentacles. Damn. Damn, son. Temperance. The Empress. Em em the Empress. The Empress. <laughs> what the fuck am I talking about? The Five of Pentacles. Hmm. This is a really interesting energy. I'm going to read it in a second. I just like to put the cards out first. Yeah, this person, let's see. Okay, this person might be jealous because they think that you're with someone else or they think that you have other, they think you have a lot of other options. Some of these people think that you're fucking around with a lot of people. There's three different men here. Look at this. Look at this shit. There's a king of pentacles, there's a king of wands, and there's a king of swords. And this could be male or female, you know? So even if I say it's a male, this this these could be women. These could be men or women. Just, you know, don't get caught up on gender. If I say male and you know it's female, just, you know, take it as it resonates. It could be male, male, and it could be female, female as well. So, you know, don't get caught up on gender. But this person thinks that you have a lot of, like, I don't want to say they think you're a slut, but it's like, Damn, like they don't, they don't just think that you're with one other person. They think that you like, look at this. They think, they think you're, you're with, with, maybe there was a rumor that was spread about you and this person was naive enough to believe that rumor. I'm wondering about that. That's possible. Cause this person thinks that you're like, have, they don't, they're not just jealous of one person. They think you have like multiple options. Like you're like playing the field right now. 
maybe you maybe you posted something maybe you posted like a hot selfie or something of yourself um on social media and you were trying to get this person's attention or maybe you were trying to make this person jealous and it backfired and instead this person's just like oh like wow she really moved on quick um or he really moved on quick um but it's like at the same time like do you want someone that's that insecure you know what i mean because it's like oh, there's such miscommunication here especially when we're just coming out of mercury retrograde that just ended what like a few days ago um God, this is such weird energy. Because it's like, it's like this person's just so, like, they just don't get it. It's like, you're dressed in, I see someone wearing, like, I don't know, this is probably for someone specific, but I feel like someone wore, like, red lipstick. Like, I'm seeing, like, you dressed hot. Like, I'm seeing, like, a, like, a red dress and red lipstick. Like, you dressed up. Like, you might have made a video or, like, something. Or a picture. And it's like, you were, like... God, you put all this energy into, like, getting that for this person's attention. And they saw it, and they're just like, oh, she must be going on a date with somebody. And it's like, no, dummy. Like, she's trying to get your attention. She's trying to show you what you're missing. She's trying to light a fire under your ass so that you grow a pair and come towards her and, and claim her, claim him. Like, you know, she wants you to fight for her, or he wants you to fight for him. Either way, it's like... You know, they posted that picture to, and this is just for, this is a specific message for someone. It's like you posted that picture to like try to get someone's attention and that person's just like, it just like had the opposite effect. They're just like, oh yeah, they must be going on a date. They must not want me anymore. And it's just like, no, that picture was like, you did all that to, for them. Like you did that, you know, you shouldn't have even had to, but you did. You tried a new approach. You're like, you switch things up a little bit. You're like, okay, I want to show this person what they're missing. And you were really hoping that they would see the picture, that they would see the post, or something that was public. You know, whether it was a picture, it's something that you put in the public, I think. Um, could be a number of things. And, like, you were hoping that they would see that and they would, you know, they would be like, damn, like, wow, I want that back. I miss that person and make a move towards you. And instead, they just got jealous and shut down. And it's just, oh, it's so stupid. Oh, this person does not get it. It's like you're having to, like, beg them to fight for you. It's, it's like you're literally, like, having to, like, energetically, practically, like, beg them to step into their power and pursue you and fight for you and show you how they feel and be vulnerable with you. And this person, there's miscommunication here and this person's pretty much doing the opposite of everything you're trying to push them to do. And everything that you're doing to, like, push them towards you is, like I said, they're misunderstanding it and taking it as, like, the opposite. But you know what? This person, the thing is, though, this person's insecurities are going, are causing this miscommunication. So there's not a lot you can do. Like, it's not your fault. You know what I mean? Like, I don't feel like you're doing anything wrong here. I feel like, like, you could tell this person you love them a hundred times and they wouldn't believe you. You could tell this person you love them 50 times a day and the one day you tell them 47 times instead of 50 times, they're going to be like, oh, she, she or she doesn't love me anymore. There's something wrong. Like, it's like this person, it's like almost like a neurotic energy. It's, it's like this person is like super pessimistic. Definitely. These, these people, it's a group of people that I'm channeling here. But it's like, you can tell them you love them. You can scream it. You can cry it. You can tell them that you want to spend your life with them. You can tell them you want you want marriage or family or whatever with them. It goes one ear, one in, in one ear, out the other. It's like they just don't hear it. Their insecurities paint a different picture. It's like they don't, like they don't comprehend it. Like they feel like it's a trap. You know, I feel like for some, they might have like an ex or someone that used them for money or used them for sex or use them for like appearances for like social status um, or an ex that abused them. And so that trauma, they still haven't fully healed from that trauma. So it's like they kind of have like it's almost like they're suspicious, like, oh, I bet. You know what I mean? Like they like, ah, like you tell them you love them and they're like, ah, I'm on to you. I knew you're, you're there's something 
There's something there. There's a reason you're saying that. You must want money from me or you must want, you must be trying to get in my pants. That's why you told me you love me. It's like someone just made your trust issues, you know, and I'm not, I'm not talking shit. I mean, I don't mean to talk shit. Like, you know, I have my trust issues. We all have our trust issues. Like everyone does. Everyone has trust issues these days. Of course we do. But I'm just saying this person's are severe. They're, they're very severe trust issues. Like you... I mean, I just don't even know what to say about it. It's like, like you, you, you tried to convince this person. You tried to reassure them. You tried to show them. And it's almost like they got addicted to that feeling of reassurance. They got addicted to you chasing them. They got addicted to having you there. They got addicted to you fighting for them. And I think some of you realize that too. I think some of you you know, did go through a phase where you reassured them all the time. I feel like this, you know, this could be someone that like, I feel like there's, okay, there's a couple different stories here. I feel like for some, it's like you guys were together, but this person had a lot of insecurities. So you did have to constantly reassure them. For others, I feel like maybe this person was like always kind of distant and emotionally unavailable from, from you. And like you had to like, almost like twist their arm to get them to come over. You know what I mean? Where it's like you text them or call them or like you guys would be talking and you'd have to be like, like, please just come over. Like, please, like, this person would, like, find every excuse to, like, flake on you or, like, create issues that weren't even there. Um, you know what I mean? It's like one of those, like, like a neurotic energy is what I'm feeling where it's almost like you guys have plans and then this person's like, oh, my God, like, actually, I have to do laundry. <laughs> I have to go paint my refrigerator. <laughs> okay. I have to wash my cat. I'm busy. I can't come over tonight. Like, just just random fucking shit like and you're like is this person serious like is this for real <laughs> like it's just such a weird neurotic energy I know I'm I sound like I'm talking shit I'm not trying to it's just like just the energy it's almost like it's like damn really it's like that <laughs> like this person or it's like this person would go through phases. I mean, for some, I feel like they were like mentally ill. Like they had like severe depression where they would go through phases where they just would not get out of bed for weeks. Um, and like you would try to get them. And, I, and it's hard. I'm not, I'm not going to talk. Like I get it. Like I have, you know, I suffer from depression on and off. Like I'm, a lot of people do. A lot of psychics do. A lot of people, a lot of psychics don't, don't admit it. But we honestly, everyone does. You know what I mean? Like it's, I mean, not everybody, but a lot of people do. Like, it's more common than people realize. But this is like, you know, like I said, there's a few different stories, but this is like severe depression. This is like, this person like shuts everybody out, like just cuts everybody off and is just done with everybody. And then they're like, they come back out of it, you know, weeks later and they're like trying to pick up the pieces. Um, and you're like, you're like, what the hell? I haven't heard from you for, you know, six months and now you want to text me? Like, what? Like... Like, you don't, you know what I mean? Like, the trust is broken and you don't know what to do. You don't know if you can really trust and believe that they're going to be consistent. And again, I'm not trying to talk shit about people that have depression. Like, I, like I said, I suffer from it. Like, I mean, I have in the past. Um, I have a lot of friends that do. Like, I, you know, everyone has, you know, a lot of people do. But I'm just saying that at the same time, you still have to, like, even if you go through those phases where you can't get out of bed, you still don't want to just throw away all your relationships. You know what I mean? Even if you just text and call someone and you say, hey, you know what? It's not you. I just, I feel like I can't, I feel like I can't be social right now. I feel like I need some time to myself, but I really care about you and I don't want you to go anywhere. Just please be patient with me. Like that's all they would have to say. But this person didn't even say that. This person doesn't even say that. This person just drops off the face of the earth and expects people to understand that when they snap out of it. And it's like, you know, it's totally understandable if you really cannot get out of bed, if you really cannot be social. That's totally understandable. But you can at least try to send, just send a text, just make a phone call and just say like, hey, like, I do love you. I do care about you. Please give me some time to myself. I can't be social right now. You know what I mean? It's it's, it's like 60 seconds. Um, But yeah, for some, this is someone that you were with and they just needed the constant reassurance. For others, this is like someone, like a situation like that where they kind of ghosted you or they kind of, they got distant or like you just can never, you never knew where you stood with them. Like you were always kind of in the dark. Like it's almost, almost like a, 
I can't diagnose anyone, full disclaimer, but it's almost like a bipolar energy where it's like very hot and cold. Like you just, you couldn't really figure them out. It's very, very mysterious energy. Like, like one minute you felt like they loved you and then the next minute you just, you, you don't know where you stand with them. You know, it was like a really, um, just a really um, unstable kind of energy. And... Whether you were actually ever with this person or not, like some of you weren't, like I said, some of you, it was just a situation where it's like, you felt like they had strong feelings, but you, they, they were so all over the place that it was hard to tell for others. You guys were together, but it's like, they seemed like they really loved you, but they needed reassurance. Like they didn't, it's like they loved you, but they didn't trust you. They didn't believe in you. They didn't believe in the connection, you know? And I think that broke your heart. It's like you wanted, you just wanted more than anything for them to trust you, for them to believe in you, for them to have faith and love, you know? Cause it's like, you were scared too, but you were taking a leap of faith just as much as they were, you know, you know what I mean? It's like, you wanted them to like match that energy. You wanted them to believe in the connection. That also kind of goes back to what I was saying about like the soulmates and twin flames, where it's like, you probably told them, some of you might've told them that you were twin flames or soulmates. And it's like, they, they were open to it, but it's like, they didn't believe in it as much as you hoped they would. You know what I mean? Like you hoped that they would take it more seriously. You hoped that they would like have a little bit more faith in the connection there. You know what I mean? Um, but either way, whether you guys were together or not, like I said, there's a few different stories here, but it's all the same energy group. It's all the same general energy, the same, same, same storyline here. You know what I mean? Um, even though there's different variations here. I hope that makes sense. Some, someday I'm going to explain energy groups to you guys, because I know some people get confused about how energy groups work. So I've actually been thinking about making a video on that. If anyone would like that, please comment below and let me know. Cause I feel like some of you guys get kind of confused about how energy groups work. So I've been meaning to do that. But anyway, they got addicted to that feeling of reassurance. It, it's like, you kind of like babied them or you kind of like, like you, you chase them. You know what I mean? Like you reassured them. And I think at some point you saw what was happening. Like you took a step back and you're like, wait a second. The more reassurance I give this person, the more they pull away. You know, it, it, it's almost like they, they projected a lot of their past issues onto you. They blamed you for a lot of things that were not your fault. You know what I mean? And they couldn't even see it. It's like they were blaming you for things that their ex did, things that their parents did, things that their their old friends did, things that, you know, happened to them as a child. It's like they were projecting all that onto you. And I think part of it is that they started a healing process with you. And not to justify this, like I'm not saying that it's okay, but I do want to say that I think part of it is that they started a healing process with you. I feel like with most people, they probably were more closed off or like they didn't, they, they were numb. They were on autopilot for a long time. So when you came around, I feel like they felt all these new feelings that they weren't familiar with. It's like, you just, you shine this light into their darkness and it freaked them out. You know, it's like they felt all these things that they hadn't felt, felt before. So they got back in touch with their heart, with their soul, with who they really are. And, you know, with that comes, you know, the trauma and the, the need for shadow work. So, you know, some of them, it's like, you know, they, they were projecting these issues onto you because it's like they were feeling them. They were acknowledging all this, like all of it, you know, all the pain they suppressed came up at once because they were finally feeling something again. Does that make sense? It's like they went so long without really feeling much of anything. And then all of a sudden they, they feel all this love and all this hope. And, you know, with that comes all the pain and all the trauma that they suppressed. So that's why you got like a mix of energies. You got love, but you also got like anger and all this other confusing energy that you're like, where the hell did this come from? Like, I didn't do anything to you, you know? And it's, it's like past energy and they didn't even realize that they were projecting onto you. There's a lot of projection, projection going on for this energy group. But, um, anyway, sorry, sometimes I start rambling when I'm, when I'm channeling and I want to get back into this, into the, what this person thinks that you're doing, what they think is going on. So I'm going to get back to that, to that in a second. But, um, you know, what I was, what I was also saying is it's almost like they needed reassurance. And I think at some point you recognize what was happening. You recognize that the more you chase them, the more you pursued them, the more you reassured them, they, the more they fought you. It's like you would reassure them. And, and instead of, you know, it's like you would try to explain how you felt or you would try to, you know, tell them like, Hey, I really genuinely want to see you. Please just come over. Stop making this so damn complicated. Just just come see me. Stop making excuses not to see me. Just just come over and we'll figure it out. Like, 
stop being so damn neurotic. We'll figure it out together. Just come talk to me. Come hang out. Like, let's just, you know, you want to take it slow? We'll take it slow. We'll go have coffee together. Like, like, you know what I mean? Like, you were trying to almost calm this person and, and help this person understand the connection. And I think at some point you saw that the reassurance didn't work. Like, they fought you. It was like a cha it was like a power struggle. It was like mind games. Um, chase or chasey games, basically, where it's like you tell them that you love them, that you, you know, just giving them that reassurance. And instead of taking that reassurance and having faith in the connection, they would do the opposite. They would, they, they got addicted to that feeling of being reassured of being um you fighting for them it's almost like they wanted to keep you on your toes they wanted to be chased they wanted to keep you fighting for them so they kept making it difficult for you the more reassurance they gave you the more reassurance you gave them the more they pulled away the more they challenged you the more they made you work for it the made the more they made you fight for them you know what I mean? And I think at some point you got pissed and you're like, oh, hell no, enough is enough. Like you saw, you saw the mind games, you saw that, that dynamic, you saw what was going on. And you're like, wait a minute, like, I tell you, I love you. And I want to spend my life with you. And you like challenge that, like, you question that you challenge that you push me away further. Like, oh, I don't think so. Like, you know, at some point you saw that they were just, you know, almost like they were playing a game. They were just addicted to that feeling of you chasing them. And so you stopped chasing them. And, you know, I feel like they got so used to it, though. They got so addicted to that feeling that now they're angry at you for taking that feeling away from them. They're angry at you. They feel entitled to it. They're angry at you for not chasing them. And it's like, the thing is, you shouldn't have to chase them. You know what I mean? Like, you're this queen. You're on your throne. You're hoping that this man will step the fuck up and be the king of pentacles. But you're not going to go, you're not going to get off your throne to go, to go pick him up and, and bring him, you know, bring him there. You're just, you're going to sit on your throne and you're going to hold this space for him. And you're going to hope that he steps up and then he claims the throne next to you all on his own. But I don't know if he really understands. I don't know if he or she understands that. It's like you're just, you haven't, it's like you haven't abandoned this person. You haven't really like left this person. You know what I mean? Like you're, you're there, you're open to them, but you're just not chasing them anymore. You're not playing that game anymore with them. You're not giving them reassurance when you know very well that they're just going to make it more of a challenge for you and that they're, they're just going to take that reassurance and just throw it in the trash and not even give a shit and just keep testing you and keep challenging you to keep continue chasing them. You know, like they're going to, it's like, you know, that the more you re reassure them, the more that they're going to hurt you. It's almost like they tested the waters too. It's like they wanted to see how much you would take. And I feel like it was almost, I don't want to say it was traumatizing for you, but I feel like it was heartbreaking for you where it was like, you were almost like afraid of how far they would push it. Cause I almost feel like there was like a betrayal, which is why you guys broke up. And this isn't for everybody. I mean, there's different variations of the story. But I'd say like 90% of the people in this energy group, there was some kind of betrayal that happened. And like, I'm not saying that there's not other reasons for it. Like, of course, there's other reasons for it. I'm sure there's plenty of reasons why they did it. There's each person has their own individual reasons. You know, as I always say, if you want me to go in depth into their individual reasons, their their feelings, you know, if, I, if you want me to get really, really specific, just email me for a private reading. My email is dragonenchantress at AOL.com. My email is right below in the description box below this video. So yeah, please feel free to email me for a private reading. Um, but, but anyway, what I'm saying is like everyone, you know, they all have different reasons. But I feel like at least part of the betrayal was basically testing the waters. It was almost like they tried to push you away and you stayed. And it's like they, how do I even explain it? It's almost like. They wanted to hurt you before you could hurt them. They wanted to leave you before you could leave them, even though you were never going to leave. You never wanted to leave, you know. But you hardened your heart a little bit, too, after this betrayal, because you're like, damn, like that, like, what the hell? Like, you know. But I just feel like. 
I just feel them like, I just feel like the energy of like them testing the waters. And I feel like that's another reason why you stopped giving them reassurance because you saw that they would push it to the limit. Like they would need more reassurance, more reassurance. So at some point this person, for some of you, this person was like, okay, well, let's see how much I can get away with. Like, are they going to love me if I go cheat? Are they going to love me if I, if I say this to them? Are they going to love me if I stay out all night and don't text them back? Are they going to love me if I do this and this and this? And for, like I said, for a while, you kept reassuring them. And then you realize that the more you reassure them, the more they pushed it, the more they did those things. And I think, I think at this last betrayal, you got scared because you're like, damn, like if they can betray me this much, like what's the next thing going to be? Is it going to be cheating? Is it going to be like, like how far are they going to take this to, to make me prove that I love them? You know what I mean? And it, it's just sad because their insecurities paint the picture. It's like, you do love them, you know? Or you did at least, you know, um, you know, that love was there or, it pop, you know, for a lot of you, it probably still is there for a lot of, for a lot of people in this industry group. Yeah, the love's probably still there, but it's like their, their insecurities are going to paint the picture. So they're not going to, they, they can't, they can't hear it. And they, you, like, you realize that they were just going to keep challenging you and keep needing reassurance. So it's like, you pulled your energy back. Um, but yeah, what's going on now is I just feel like they feel really entitled, like they feel entitled to that. They feel used to that. They also feel like, I think you did it for so long too, that it became a habit where it's like, they feel like, like it backfired on them and they're realizing it and they, they, they have too much pride to admit it though. It, it, it's like that backfired on them. They thought they were going to be able to push it to the limit, that they were going to be able to cheat and do this and do that and just keep taking it further and you would keep chasing them and they just loved it. It was like a, just how do you even explain the energy? It's like a power struggle. Like they just like loved that you were chasing them. They loved that energy. It's like you became like the scapegoat for all their traumas and all their issues. It's like you just... You know, the love that they never felt their entire life, they just, they they tried to pull you to make them feel that. Does that make sense? It's like they tried to, um, I mean, you guys, I think you guys get, I think, I feel like maybe I'm saying it in a weird way, in a weird way. I don't know. I hope you guys understand what I'm saying. It's almost like they just, they loved you chasing them. They just, take it how it resonates. They just, they were addicted to the feeling of you chasing them, of you pursuing them. They wanted to keep pushing that to see how far that they could take it. To see, you know, how will, will will he or she stay if I cheat, if I do this, if I do that? Like, what will they put up with? Like, like just constantly trying to make you prove yourself. Um, and a lot of them were, like, ghosting. A lot of them, like, were, were just very, they'd go, you know, weeks being silent and then message you. Or, and, you know, like, they never let the connection be taken off the ground. Like, they never, they had you believing they were going to commit to a relationship and they never did with you. Like you guys never really got together. It just kind of like, you know, it just it's never went off the ground and you thought it would. But yeah, what I was saying is like they're addicted to that and they feel entitled to that energy. And it's just, it's so ridiculous because it's like, Like, they kept waiting for you to text them or call them or pursue them or cry for them or beg them to come back or do what you used to do, and you didn't do it. And you shouldn't have to. And what they don't understand is that you not doing it doesn't mean that you love them any less. It just means that you're not willing to keep breaking your own heart. You're not willing to keep giving them reassurance when they're just going to take that reassurance and throw it in the trash and just throw it right back in your face and keep challenging you and keep testing you and keep hurting you. You know what I mean? Like, I think you got to a point where you're like, okay, this person's either going to, they're going to step, the, they're going to step up and they're going to be the king of pentacles all on their own. And they're going to trust me and they're going to take a leap of faith with me and match my energy or they're not. You know what I mean? Like, you're not doing the limbo thing anymore. You're not doing this, 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 you know, middle ground bullshit, this temperance energy. You're not doing it anymore. You're like, no, like this person's either going to step up and they're going to match my energy. They're going to pursue me. They're going to love me you know, it's going to be a mutually giving, giving relationship or it's not like, you know, you don't love them any less. You're just, you're not willing to chase them anymore. You're not willing to keep putting yourself through that when they've shown you that, you know, the reassurance does not mean jack shit to them. It doesn't really, it, it doesn't, they still don't believe you love them. They still don't, you know what I mean? They still just keep challenging you. They, you know what I mean? So it's like, you're, you're not going to stick around and see, 
what the next huge betrayal is um, that they're going to throw at you to, to test the waters and see how much you're willing to put up with. Like, you're not doing that anymore. So they can either step up and be the king of pentacles and meet you at your level and match your energy and take a leap of faith with you and for you. Or they cannot, but either way, you're not going to chase them. And it's just, it's so strange that they feel angry about that because it's like, damn, like the ball is in their court. How do they not realize that they're the one that screwed up? Like, how do they not see that the ball would be in their court? But I guess, like I said, I guess they just kind of got used to you chasing them. So it's like, they don't, it's like they're, they're, it's kind of hitting them now. They're like, oh shit, like they're not going to message me first, <laughs> you know? Um, some of you might have tried to even, some of you might have tried to and <sighs> this person might not have even like seen the message or they might not have, they might have like read it and like not responded or something. You know what I mean? It's like they might have, like they might have just taken it as like an excuse to keep challenging you. It's such a, uh, such a weird energy. But anyway, yeah, this person feels like you're this empress. They feel like you just, like, you're just chilling, like, you don't, you don't give a shit. And like I said, like, like, you do care. You do love them. I feel like a lot of you do still love them. Not all of you do, but a lot of you, a lot of you still do. But it's like, you're not, you're not getting off your throne for them. You're not playing these games anymore. They can meet you at this level. They can match your energy. They can be... They can take on that warrior energy and they can match your energy, match your spirit and love you properly or they can lose you. There is no middle ground anymore. There is no more mind games. There is no more, you know, chaser chasey games. There is no more, you know, projecting all their traumas and all their trust issues onto you and blaming you and getting mad at you for things that you didn't even do. Um... There is no more cheating. There's no more lies. There's no more secrets. You're not doing it anymore. You're not going to be in limbo anymore. You're, you're not, you know, usually temperance is good. In this case, I'm not seeing, in this context, I'm not seeing it as a good thing. I'm seeing it more like, like, you're not doing it. You're looking away. You're looking elsewhere. You're like, nope. Like, I don't, I don't want to be in this middle ground. I want you all in or I want you all out. Like, you, you know what I mean? And this person's trying to still be halfway in and halfway out. They're trying to hold on to your energy but they're still acting on fear and they're still, and like I said, you know, like I've been talking about in this reading, it's almost like there was like a shift where it's like they, they felt guilty. They felt regretful. And so they started feeling angry at you for that. It's like, they need to take responsibility they need to, you know what I mean? And it's just, it's so sad because it's such a simple answer. Like you literally, like they could call you right this minute. They could message you right this minute. They could show up at your door right this minute and I feel like the majority would, would open them with welcome arms, you know what I mean? Like, you would be thrilled. You'd be, probably be so turned on. Like, you would probably be so turned on that this person made such a huge romantic gesture for you, that they made an effort for you, that they chased you for a change, that they put themselves out there and were vulnerable for you for a change. That, you know what I mean? Like, some of you, have, like, if this person showed you that they trust you, that they love you, that they care about you... Like, that they're willing to take a leap of faith for you. Like, that, you know, if they showed you that you're worth it to them. I feel like oh, some of you would cry. Like, you would just be so happy that they trust you. That they believe in you. That they believe in the connection. That they're fighting for you. It's like, you would be so turned on. You know, it's like, so many of you are, are so turned off right now. But it's like, they could turn you on like that. Like, so easily. But they're, you know, they're holding on to fear. They're holding on to ego. They're holding on to old toxic ways. And a lot of this toxicity is coming up because their spirit guides are working with them to do the shadow work. You know what I mean? Like, you know, this, this toxic energy is supposed to be here to some degree because they're meant to do the shadow work with it. They're meant, you know what I mean? It's like they're being forced to face themselves. They're being forced to face these traumas, to face these issues, to face these insecurities to do the shadow work, but instead of, instead of taking this energy and doing the shadow work and, and, and sitting with it and, and really being honest with themselves about it and healing, healing it and working through it, they're kind of doing the opposite. They're just getting angry because they're feeling, you know, all these insecurities and all this energy that they're not used to feeling. And they blame you for that. It's like, 
damn, like she opened my third eye up. Like she, she changed my life. She, she made this energetic shift happen for me. And now she's not here. Like, like they feel mad at you, but it's like, like, how are you going to be mad at someone when you're not calling them? You're not texting them. Like, how are they going to be mad at you when they're not making a move towards you? That's on them. That's their own fault. They could pick up the, like I said, they could pick up the phone right now and call you. They could drive to your house right now and, you know, and be vulnerable and be honest with you, but they're choosing not to. And you're allowing them to choose that because you know your power, you know your worth. And you're respecting their free will. You're letting them choose that if that's what they want to choose. But a lot of you are hoping that they step out of that and they do pursue that you. They do be vulnerable with you. You know what I mean? But it's like you're in this empress energy. They feel left out of the cold, in the cold, five of pentacles. They feel they're having a lot of anxiety. They're having a lot of sleepless nights, insomnia, nine of swords, feeling trapped. Really negative mind sp night mindset right now. Really um, like depression, anxiety really in their head they need to get out of the eight of swords and nine of swords energy because they're creating issues that are not even there they are imagining worst case scenario like for a lot of you you're not even dating anybody else but in their head you've got like like all these different men or all these different women you know like i said male or female just take it as it resonates there's no specific gender here but it's like in in their mind it's like you have all these different options and it's like some of you are literally, like, sitting at home, like, missing this person. Like, wishing they would just step the hell up and, like, message you or call you or come to your house. You know? Some of you are, like, literally just, like, waiting for this person. Some of you are just, like, holding space for this person. Like, you don't even want to date anybody else. Um, but in this person's mind, it's like you have all these other options or like they think you're, they might have been like a rumor that was spread because some of them really think that you were date that you're dating somebody else and you're not. I mean, some of you are, don't be wrong. Some of you are, but a lot of you aren't. Um, gosh, it's such a strange energy. Yeah, it's like they just, they need to be accountable for themselves. They need to realize the power they have. Like, literally all they would have to do is call you and they would be out of this Nine of Swords energy. They could switch this like that, like, so quickly. Some of them are manifesting this for you, though. Honestly, some of them are manifesting a new person for you. Some of them are pissing. So, okay, this is an interesting energy I'm, get, I'm getting. Some of them are pissing off their spirit guides or pissing off your spirit guides. Like, I feel like your spirit guides are over there with them, kind of pushing them towards you. Um, there's, like, mutual spirit guides. Like, they have their own and they have yours over there, kind of going back and forth and kind of relay relaying information between you two. Um, but some of these, so for some, this person's actually manifesting new love for you. They're so in their head and they're so... This person's a powerful manifester. And for some... This person is like so like they're they're seeing you with other guys like they're dreaming about you with other guys or other girls like they're making themselves jealous. They're doing it to themselves. And for some, they're actually how do I explain this? They're it's almost like your spirit guides are manifesting this new person for you for some of you because they're so tired. Like your spirit guides are starting to lose faith that this person's going to step up. Your, your spirit guides are divided. I think I talked about this before, where they're kind of, like, divided. Like, half of them are still working with this person. They're still having hope that this person can be vulnerable, that they can be honest, that they can, you know, be assertive and take control of their life and, and move towards you and make a romantic gesture and take this leap of faith towards you, towards this new beginning with you. You know, half of your spirit guides believe that they can do that, that they can, that they can start this new chapter with you. The other half are divided and trying to find, like, manifesting someone new for you. And the sad thing is, I feel like this person, this king of pentacles that's in this nine of swords energy is almost manifesting this new love, and new, like a king of wands or a king of swords for you. They're, they're almost, you know, male or female. I feel like this person's, like, manifesting someone new for you. I feel, so, I, sorry, when I channel, sometimes I ramble a lot. So I hope you guys can keep up with me. Um, if you guys need me to go slower, let me know. Cause I know sometimes I just, I go really quickly so I can, I can try to talk a little bit slower if it's easier for you guys. But, um, what I was going to say is for some, 
for some, Loki is one of your spirit guides. I got that. For some, you have, like, Norse spirit guides. This is just for, like, one or two people. But, um, what I was going to say is for some, this person's pissing off your spirit guides. And they're pissing off very powerful spirit guides by being in Nine of Swords energy and not moving towards you. Like, this, like, they have, like, it's like your spirit guides are kind of trying to help them. They're trying to help them do the shadow work. They're trying to help your person, like be brave and and love themselves and push past the fear and make some you know what I mean like like make move towards make moves towards you and this person's like arguing with your spirit guides this person's like no like I know she would never take me back or I know that or he would never take me back male or female um or I know that she's with I know she's messing around there was a rumor that that was spread around the towns so I know she's messing around with this guy and this guy and this guy like or I had a dream I had a nightmare about it so I know it's true or our I, um, you know, I know I can't have good things last or just like very pessimistic. And this person, like your spirit guides are running out of patience with this person. <laughs> your spirit guides have been trying to help your true love get on their destined path and move towards you and start a life with you. But for some, it's like your, your person, this, per this true love of yours, this King of Pentacles of yours is fighting. I'm getting one main spirit guide, but there's probably a few, but there's one main one that's like a very powerful spirit guide, kind of like, not, not like a major dark energy, but it's like a, it's a strong energy, I'll say that, I I don't want to say dark, I mean, not, it's not dark in a bad way, it's just, it's strong, it's not like a love and light and positive vibes energy, it's, it's a very strong energy that this, this masculine spirit guide I'm channeling has, um, could be feminine spirit guides as well, but, but anyway, yeah, it's like the spirit guide's trying to work with your person and trying to push them towards you. And your person keeps fighting the spirit guides. They keep saying, like like I said, they keep saying, like, you know, like it could never happen. Like, like I bet, I bet it's too late now. Or I bet that she's with someone else. Or I bet she's going to meet someone else. Or I don't deserve her. Or blah, 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 blah. And your spirit guide's getting pissed off. And your spirit guide's like, okay, you want to bet? Like, your spirit guide's like, okay, you want to believe that? You want to fight me on everything when I keep... Like, I feel like your spirit guide's, like, mad because they're not believing them. Like, there's, like, a spirit with them right now that's, like, literally being like, dude, just call her. Just message her. Just, like, this spirit guide might be even be coming through their dreams. Like, they might be having contradictory dreams where sometimes they dream that they should call you or they dream that you guys are together or they dream that they should reach out. And then other times their fears and anxieties come into play and they have nightmares that like you're with someone else or they, they like see you having sex with someone else in, the, in their dreams or they have like nightmares that you're just, you've moved on or just like they wake up feeling alone, like wake, wake up crying, wake up, waking up upset and they, they're they still learning to use their intuition. So some of them don't understand the energy. Some of them don't know what's intuition and what's not. And these spirit guides are trying to work with them. These spirit guides are trying to, you know, tell them. This spirit, this spirit guides is like trying to tell them, like, you know, like message her, like call her. It's so freaking easy. Like, go to her house. You don't know if she'll answer the phone. Okay, go like bring her some roses. Leave my, like go to her house or like go. I mean, I don't want to. I don't want to like encourage them to be stalkers. I don't mean it like that, but it's like. Some of them are being encouraged, though, to, like, go, to just go, okay, it's like, okay, you don't want to call her? Go knock on her door, like, like, it's like they channel you and they start feeling that you're open and then they, like, get in their head and then they doubt it and they close it off. And they're really frustrating a few of your spirit guides and one main powerful spirit guide in particular that they're really pissing off right now. And so the spirit guide's kind of tired of arguing with them. The spirit guide's tired of telling, of telling this person, hey, she loves you, reach out, you know, like, it's so simple, and this person's just not getting it through their thick head, and your spirit guy is just getting really mad, and so now they're like, you know what, like, you want to argue with me when I tell you that she loves you, and that you have a new start with her, and you should reach out, you want to keep arguing with me, with me on that, you want to keep, you want to, it's like, this person's arguing with a spirit, they're arguing with, like, a god or a goddess here, um, or even like an angel spirit. They're arguing with a, a very powerful spirit. They're, and this spirit's getting mad because I, okay, so this, this spirit that I'm, that I'm channeling, it's almost like a spirit that is not like being questioned. Like this is a very powerful masculine energy. 
Like this spirit does not, and it could be feminine. It could be a female spirit guide for some, but it's, it's just like, I'm just going to get an energy that like it does. This spirit guide does not like being questioned. The spirit guide is like, like they, they don't have a lot of patience for that. Like they, they, they're very, this, it's a very strong guide. And so your person, your true love being over there back and forth, like, you know, oh no, she doesn't love me. You're wrong. Oh no, I can't reach. I can't go to her house. You're wrong. Oh, I, ha I have other things to do today. You know, oh, she doesn't like, what do you mean she likes roses? I don't think she likes roses. I bet you're wrong on that. They're pissing this spirit guide off because they're questioning them. They're challenging them too much. They're not listening to them. They're not listening to their intuition. And so for some, this spirit guide is, is getting to that point where they might just, this might be like a chaotic spirit guide. This might be like a trickster energy. Um, not in a bad way, but I just mean like, you know, there, there's certain gods like, because I did get Loki energy. For some, this is Loki. And Loki can be good. I mean, I was closed off to Loki for the longest time. And I recently, like, like the past couple months or so, I've opened myself up to Loki. You know what I mean? And it's like, he can be, you know, I have to, you know, he can be a trickster. Like, yeah, you have to, you know, it's, it's not an energy to mess with. But, I mean, he's also very loving and kind from what I've been noticing, you know. But anyway, not to get too much into that, but just, like, it's that kind of energy. It's, like, a very powerful energy. Because I'm feeling like for a few people, I do feel like it's Loki. But for others, I feel like it could be like an angel spirit or it could be like another god or another being. I mean, take it as how it resonates because there's different beings here. You know what I mean? There's different. It's not going to be the same for everybody. But um, but I'm, I'm just feeling because since I've been channeling Loki's energy the past couple months, I can kind of recognize it and I feel it in this energy group. So I do feel it. That's why I'm saying for some, I feel like this is Loki that's with your person. I feel like Loki is like or you have Norse gods around you. Is the energy I'm getting Norse gods and goddesses? But anyway, yeah, this 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 spirit guide does not like being questioned and challenged. So so, I almost feel like this spirit might end up manifesting a new love for you, just because they're so tired of this. It's like they're, you know, this person's being like, no, nah, I bet there was someone else. This spirit guide's getting to that breaking point where they're just gonna be like, okay, you want to be right so bad? Okay, I'll bring someone else. Just, I'll bring them someone else and I'll bring, I'll bring you a true love. I'll bring them true love and I'll make you watch it because she pissed me off. <laughs> I'll make you see that someone new is coming into their life. I'll make you watch it because you pissed me off by not taking this leap of faith, by not taking this divine opportunity, um, by not listening to me, by not listening to your intuition, by not pushing past your fear. You know, you put, you, the spirit guy got pissed off. And so some of them, it's like they're they're actually manifesting a new person for you, basically. Um, their negative thoughts are so strong. They're so convinced that you deserve someone else or that you're with someone else or that you're going to be with somebody else that, you know, the spirit guy is just going to get to a point where they're like, okay, fine. Like, okay, you want, you want to believe that? We'll make it happen. Um, cause it's like, look at this. This is two different men. This is, this is three different men. I mean, but this is, it's like this person thinks that you have like multiple people. It's not even just, they think you have one other person. They think you've got like, like every, like a lot, a lot of different people. Devil energy. It's like fears, um, self-sabotage, self-doubts, like change. Like this person needs to break free from their chains. Like, you know, I cannot stress this enough. It's like, they're doing it to themselves. They are creating like... It'd be so easy for them to switch this energy up. It'd be so easy for them to make a move towards you, to turn you on, to to start a new chapter with you. It's like almost like they could do it overnight practically. But some of them are just, you know, just being stubborn. Ooh. What else? The fool. The six of cups. Yeah, because you want to build with them, but it's like you're not gonna you're not gonna sit in this nostalgic energy all the time. You know what I mean? It's like they have a new start with you, but they can't. They have to get out of their head, and they have to actually be willing to build with you and make this love offer towards you. But yeah, like I said, some of them are just so mad. Some of them are getting mad at you too because your spirit guide is fighting on your behalf. And they don't understand that energy and they feel those spirits around them. So they're actually getting pissed at you consciously 
it's almost like, okay, like, so on, like, an astral level, like, telepathically, spiritually, they have these spirit guides that are kind of being like, hey, stop being a little bitch and go message her. Go show up at her door with roses. And and it's almost like it's almost like the spirit guides kind of poke, like, having fun with, with your true love. They're having fun with this this soulmate or twin flame of yours. They're, um, they're really pushing them. And it's, it's like a tough love, you know what I mean? Like, they care about your person, too. They really do care about them, but they're, they're really they're really pushing them towards you. They're pushing them towards this new life with you. And I feel like some of them, like, for some, your people are kind of getting, um, like, your true love is getting kind of angry because it's like they feel that energy, like, telepathically. They feel those spirits. Even if they don't, even if they don't consciously understand what it is. Like, their soul does. Like, when they go astral travel, they, you know what I mean? They're communicating with these spirits. They know what that is. But they might not be conscious of astral traveling. They might not be conscious of any of it. But, um, you know, their soul is, like, almost like their, I don't want to say their soul is stressed out. But it's almost like they're feeling the energy and then they're taking that anger out on you. You know? Like, they're being pushed, and then they're they're kind of just, like, deflecting and, like, taking it out on you. And like I said, there's other reasons for the anger, too. They don't want to... They don't want to face themselves. They don't want to do... They don't... They, they're being pushed so hard to do shadow work, and they're tr they're fighting it. They don't want to do the shadow work. <laughs> they, um, they're they really trying not to have to do the shadow work. They're trying everything they can to avoid the shadow work. Um, and avoid taking accountability and, you know, and taking leave of faith and being vulnerable. And like I said, they felt they feel entitled to your energy because they're so used to you chasing them. And they almost feel like they need answers from you. But it's like, okay, well, if you need answers, you got to reach out. You can't, you know what I mean? Like, why is that your fault that they're not reaching out to you? It's not your fault. It's their fault. They're the one that, they're, the ball is in their court. You know, the sooner they realize that, the better. Um, but I mean, just keep doing what you're doing. Keep standing in your power. You know, I just want to give you guys an energy update. Um, you know, keep standing in your power. You, you can't, you know very well that if you try to chase this person and reassure them that it's just going to be the same cycle as before. So I think you're really doing the right thing by being strong and being in your power. Um, You know, if you need to send a message, do it. I mean, do it for yourself if you need to. But for a lot of you, I feel like you're doing the right thing by just being silent and being in your power and just kind of, you know, letting the chips fall where they may. Letting, you know, just... just. It's like a queen is not going to get off her throne. You know what I mean? Like, you're going to sit on your throne and he can either take the throne next to you or somebody else can, but you're not going to get off your throne and go down to his level and baby him and reassure him and convince him he deserves the throne. Either he's going to step up and he's going to claim that throne and he's going to work hard to deserve it and deserve you, or he's not. You know what I mean? Like either he's going to make that call and he's going to come show up at your door and surprise you or he's not and you know that you're not you're not going to do the in and out thing anymore you're not going to you're not going to do the mind games again so you know you I feel like you guys are doing the right thing by just standing in your power and just you know holding space and being open you know what I mean being open to to true love whether it's this person or somebody new because like I said, for your spirit guides are divided on it. For some, your spirit guides are losing faith in this person and they really do want to see you two together, but they're starting to lose faith that this person is ever going to be vulnerable and ever going to take a leap of faith towards you. And so some of them might be bringing you someone new. It's, there's different stories here. Some of you are going to end up with somebody new, but some of you are going to end up with this old person. You have two potential life partners here. You were actually meant to be with this person that you were with, but they betrayed you and they hurt you and they went off their destined path. And so I feel like... I mean, I feel, you know, like, you, you it, there's free will, you know? It's like if they're off their destined path, it's like you want more than anything for them to get back on their destined path. Their spirit guides and your spirit guides want them on their destined path, but they have to, they have to make that 
decision to be back on their destined path towards you, you know, building a future with you. That's up to them. Um, but it's sad because they are a life partner. That was the person you're supposed to be with. It's, it still is the person you're, you're meant to be with for a lot of you. But for some, it's like this person might make the decision to hold on to fear. They might make the decision that they cannot be brave. That they, it's, it's really sad, but some of them might make the decision that they cannot be brave. Some of them might make the decision that they would rather, that some of them are going to choose fear over love. That's basically, that's what it comes down to. They have to choose between fear and love. They can't be in, in between. They can't have both. They have to choose one or another. They can have fear or they can have love, but they can't, they can't play both sides anymore. Um, and you can be terrified, but still push past the fear. You know what I mean? Like you could be scared, but still take a leap of faith. Like everybody's scared. But people decide who and what is worth it to them. And I think that you know that. You know what I mean? Like, you know that if they truly deeply love you, they're going to fight for you no matter how afraid they are. They're going to show up for you no matter how scared they are. You know, someone that loves you is not going to put themselves in a position to lose you. Someone that, someone that loves you is not going to let you go. Um... Someone that loves you is going to show up at your door even if their voice shakes and they're terrified. They're, they're, they're not going to, you know what I mean? They're, they're not going to let that go so easily. Um, they're not going to let you go so easily. So if they do choose, it's really sad because if they choose love, you guys can have like happily ever after, like ten of cups, the fool, like everything you could ever dream of, you know, like home, business, family, everything. Um... For some, I hate, I hate to say it because I know it hurts, but for some, they are going to end up choosing fear. And if that happens, please, for one thing, know that it's not the universe messing with you because I feel like for some of you, you waited so long for this person and you got this person and you're like, really? Like, this happened? And it's like, you need to understand, like, your spirit guides are not, your spirit guides didn't take this away from you. They didn't punish you or anything like that. It, it's... It's this person's free will. This person is doing this. You know what I mean? Like, don't blame your spirit guides for this. Because I feel like sometimes it's easy to get caught up. Like, when you get your heart broken, it's really easy to be like, damn, like, the universe is out to get me. Like, I'm never going to have love. I'm going to be alone forever. Like, why? Like, does God hate me? Do my spirit guides hate me? And it's like, no, it's not like that. Like, your spirit guides want you to be happy. Your angels, your gods and goddesses, space spirits, all these spirits want you to be happy. They want you to have true love. They want you to have money. They want you to have the home you want, the car you want, the success you want. They want you to have all these things. It's just a matter of being aligned with these things and wrapping up, you know, karmic cycles and, and getting on your destined path. You know what I mean? It's, it's like they do want you to have this. They want you to know that you deserve true love. They, they, want, they want you to have this life partner. But, um, so just, I just want to say that, like, don't blame your spirit guides for this because your spirit guides are really, your spirit guides are working harder than you realize. Like, you know, it might be for those of you that work with these beings, it's, it's a good idea to light some incense for them and pray to them and thank them because you honestly have no idea how hard they're working for you right now. Like some of you are crying and you're getting frustrated with this King of Pentacles and you're like, please just bring him back to me. Like, just get him to to be brave and to show up and, and, and come be with me and come make an effort for me. And you're crying and you're getting mad at your spirit guides. And it's, it's not like you, you have no idea how hard your spirit guides are working. Like they're listening to you, but this person has free will. So there's only so much they can do. You know what I mean? Like, what are they going to do? Possess this person and force them to come be with you? No, you know, they're not going to do that. They're going to push this person, but they're not going to mess with this person's free will. So please take a moment to appreciate your spirit guides, to thank them, to light a candle for them, to light incense for them, to give them an offering, you know, give them some food. You can look up offerings that they like, but you can also just intuitively give them an offering you feel like they might want, that they might like, you know, like you could paint them a picture, you can write them a song, whatever it is that you do, you know, it doesn't have to cost money, but please take a moment to like thank and appreciate your spirit guides and just recognize how much they're fighting for you right now, how much they're fighting on your behalf because they really do, they really do want you to have true love. They really do want you to have your happy, happy ending. Finally. <coughs> oh, sorry. I'm starting to lose my, lose my voice a little bit. Um, could be throat chakra blocks for some of you. 
but they do want you to have true love and abundance. And some of you need to unblock your throat chakra so that you can communicate with them. Say what you really feel. Some of you are not saying what you really feel. You're like, you, you need to be honest and say what you feel and talk to them. Talk to your spirit guides more, please. But yeah, really thank them. Appreciate them. They're working so hard on this person. They just, they can't, they can't disrespect this person's free will though. Um, and like I said, it's sad because this person's meant to be your life partner, but I just feel like it's like you guys were meant to, to grow together. You guys were meant to be together, but this person's free will, like they went down another path. You know what I mean? They kind of got lost and, um, your spirit guides are really trying to get back on, trying to get them back on their destined path with you so that you two can just be happy together and have the life you're meant to have together. But, you know, even if it wasn't really the original plan, your spirit guides might just end up bringing you someone else, a different life partner. Even if you weren't originally meant to be with somebody else, they might bring you somebody else anyway because they don't want to see you heartbroken and waiting on this person forever either because they know what you've been through. Like, your spirit guides are on board with you. They feel the same impatience you do. They're like, yeah, he or she has been through enough. They don't deserve to be alone anymore. They don't deserve to be heartbroken anymore. So they're only going to wait so long for this person before they just bring you somebody new that's going to match your energy. You know, even if it's not originally what was going to happen, but... Um, I mean, I, I believe in destiny. I really do. So, I, I mean, this person, I'm sure this person's like a soulmate. I'm not, I'm not saying that they're going to pick some random Joe off the street. I'm just saying that, like, there's two potential life partners. Maybe there, maybe there was always two potential life partners. I don't know. But for some, it's like, you could have easily just stayed with this person. And you guys could have just been happy, but they took it on a different path. So... Now your spirit guides might be bringing you someone else soon if this person does not step up and claim you and treat you right and love you. It's like you're holding out for this person. This is the person that you want. And you guys would be very happy together. Like, you guys would be so happy together. But your spirit guides don't want you alone forever. They don't want you in pain forever. They don't want you waiting for this person forever. And I feel like it depends on this person's choice. Like, if this person chooses fear, then that's that's that moment the spirit your spirit guides are going to bring the new, this new person in. But if this person chooses love, then you might not ever even meet this person. You know? You might just get back with this person. Some of you have already met this person, and you're trying to, you know, decide between the two. But it's like... It's just really sad because it's like, God, you guys, this is like the perfect couple. It's like, yeah, as the Queen of Pentacles, you could be with the King of Wands or the King of Swords, but your your divine counterpart is this King of Pentacles. Like, this is like a power couple. Like, this is, this is, it, it, there's no more, this is, a, this is a perfect match. Like, yeah, you could be with the King of Wands or the King of Swords, but that's not your divine match. It's It's a soulmate. It's someone that you could be happy with. But, you know, this is your true love. This is the person you'd probably be even more happy with, even though they're, they're both life partners. This is your first choice is what I'm saying. This person or this person is your second choice. Well, you could have two. You could have multiple people coming in. But, um, but yeah, this person, they need to realize they're your king of pentacles. And they need to step up. And they need to... They need to claim that throne before another man does, honestly. And they can't block it. Some of them will try to block it. No. They, the divine isn't going to let that happen. Some of them will try to, they'll try to, some of them will like recognize this and they get jealous and they're going to try to energetically block it or do witchcraft or do something to block it. They can't block it. The only, the only way that they could potentially block it is if they stepped into their power and claimed you and, and, you know, moved towards you and made, a, and took that leap of faith. But if they're not doing anything, the divine will not let them block it. If they're just sitting on their ass and they're scared and they're not making any effort towards you, they're just doing nothing towards you, they can't sit there and meditate and block this coming in for you if they're not willing to step up themselves. It's almost like, okay, here's your throne. Like, you know, you have two options. You can step up and take this throne and, you know, be this divine counterpart, you know, be together or, you know, you can step out and someone else is going to take this turn instead. 
Either way, this Queen of Pentacles is not going to be alone much longer. I'd say by the end of the year, she's not going to be alone. But the throne is not going to be blocked, is what I'm saying. Like, that's, you know, he's either going to take it or this other person's going to take it. But the Divine is not going to let this King of Pentacles block this, block other men out, unless he's willing to take the throne and, and match her energy and support her and love her and be there for her. And you know what I mean? And, make, and take this leap of faith. You know, so, you know, you have true love coming either way. you got something coming, but it's just, it's, it's again up to this person. The ball is in their court. Do they choose love or do they choose fear? Um, I hope this helps you guys. And like I said, if you want an email, just send me an email. Or if you, if you want an email, oh my gosh, I'm sorry. I am a space cadet when I channel. If you want a reading, please email me. At dragon enchantress at AOL.com. Like I said, my email is below in the description box below this video. Donations are really appreciated. Even just a dollar, it adds up quickly. My donation links are also in the description box below this video. Um, please comment, like, share, subscribe. Like maybe someone that you know needs to hear this message. You know, thank you guys for watching.